Okay, so today is kind of a review day of yesterday with one extra thing added in. You will need your graphing calculators. Everybody grab your graphing calculator. I'm going to pause for a second while you get those ready. All right. So what we did yesterday was we would graph parabolas that would look kind of like this. And then I told you how to find important spots on those parabolas. The number one thing is how high is it when it starts? That's called the y-intercept. If I show you the equation for this one, y equals negative 4.9. Y because of gravity, x squared, plus, let's say, 3x. Let's say that's the velocity. Did you catch that? In one of the questions, they told you that that number there is the velocity. So if they tell you, and they are going to on your test that you're going to have after, you know, after the weekend, a couple days later, I think it's on Tuesday, maybe, no, Tuesday's, yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday, anyway, I'll tell you for sure uh, as we get closer. Uh, you don't have the test next. You have a review day next, and then you have the test. So let me think for just for a second. You don't have Monday off, but you have had so many days off. Yeah. But Friday is today. I'm talking about next. No, I'm oh, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I'm, well, for, it's not off, but it's a weird day. You're right, um, because I think it's shortened day on Friday. Anyway, so Monday you have a review. Tuesday, you have the little test on this stuff, a quiz. On the quiz, they're going to ask you right equations. That's what I'm trying to get you good at right now. So this is the way you always start your equation. As long as it's in meters and it's on the earth, it will be that number. And then we're going to always do it on the earth. And we're always going to use meters, I think. If we change it to feet, we'd have to really tell you that, make it really clear. Then the velocity is this. Three meters per second is not very fast. But if you're like, you know, like a little kid throwing a ball or something, that might be a reasonable number. Yes? Do you need the negative? Yes, because otherwise your parabola won't be upside down. All right. So this is the velocity right here. So whatever they tell you the velocity is, put it right there. So I'm saying 3, which maybe a little kid might only be 1 meter per second or whatever for a speed of throwing a ball. But The last thing is the y-intercept, this number right here, how high it is. And how, why would you ever start off the ground? Well, in reality, if I threw this marker at somebody right now, it's going to be starting at about four feet high. Okay, so if I was going to graph it, I'd need to reflect that in my equation by saying plus four. Okay, so given that I just told you how to build an equation right there, all I need to tell you is the velocity and how high it is when it starts, right? And you could write an equation. And then I'm going to ask you to graph it. And then I'm going to just remind you before we go that far, I'm going to ask you to tell me the maximum. That's this spot right here. You're going to go second calculate the maximum. Then you've got to get to the left side of it, the right side of it, and right on top of it. All right. Then I'm going to ask you to tell me after 1.5 seconds, how high is it? And that's telling you an x value. If I tell you an x value like that, let's say it's like right here is where 1.5 seconds is. Then you figure out where that is by typing in second calculate a value. Remember doing that yesterday? And then the last kind was this spot where it hits the ground. That's called the zero point. So you'd go second calculate the zero. Do you remember that? Raise your hand if you feel comfortable with that stuff. Okay, good. And I don't expect you to be perfect, but you should be pretty good by now because the test is coming and that's one of the biggest things. If you're not, you need to ask somebody today. I'm going to pair you up with somebody in a minute that you're going to have to explain how to do these things. So if you don't know how to do it, ask me so I can help you. Because in a few minutes, you're going to have to explain to somebody else how you find the zero. Second, calculate zero. Go to the left of it. Go to the right of it. That whole thing. If you don't get that, ask me for personal help here in a minute. Okay. So here is the equation I'd like you to write. It'll start the same way. But write me this equation. And then you're going to type it into your calculator. And you're going to answer a few questions about it. You're going to tell me what is its maximum height. And in the same moment you find that, you're finding a height and a time, right? So I want to know what the time is when it hits that maximum height. I'm going to be asking you for where is this thing at time 1.5 seconds. So what's the height? And the third question I'm going to ask you is what is the zero of the graph, as in when did it hit the ground? All right, so when hit ground. To be able to answer those three questions, now here's the equation. The equation is 
I am going to uh, be the kicker in the big game coming up, the uh, Super Bowl. And when you kick that football, the guy is kicking it. He's obviously practiced a lot. They kick it with a lot of velocity. We're going to say that he is able to kick it at uh, 55, 55 meters per second. Okay, so that's the velocity you should put into the equation you're going to write. And then the last part is, how high off the ground would you say that thing is? It's on a tee. It's probably like four, four or five inches off the ground, maybe. I'm going to say six inches just to make it simple because then, oh, wait, we've got to put it in meters, don't we? Let's say it's a tenth of a meter off the ground when it starts. All right, write me an equation. In a moment, I'll tell you what the equation is so that even if you're lost, you can just type it in the calculator. Y equals negative 4.9. I'm going to use T squared, but you all know you'd put an X on the calculator. Plus, and I, what did I say you had for a velocity? 55T. And then how high did we start? Plus 0.1. Now, if you were off there because you heard me say one, just leave it, but your answers will be slightly different. Okay, tenth of a, of a meter off the ground is really short, and that's how high, it, you know, a T is off the ground a little bit. Okay, so then, that maximum height and time, you should have put that into your calculator just like this. Negative 4.9, I'll pause for just... Okay, so why can't I see it? It's off my graph, so I'm going to go to my window, and I'm just going to think for a minute. My X is my time. Do you think I need to go any further than 10 seconds for that ball to be in the air? No, so that's fine. My X's are fine. My Y's are off, though. You think the ball is going to go higher than 10 feet in the air? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to go up to 150. I doubt it would go that high in the real world, but uh, Y max, I'll make 150. Now I'm going to graph it, and I can see my parabola going up. Oh, wait a minute. It is going to be longer than 10 seconds according to this. So basically, this is not probably realistic that somebody can kick it with a force of 55 because I don't think that the ball ever stays in the air 10 seconds. There's no way, right? I mean, maybe three, four seconds or something, but anyway, so I'm going to just extend my graph out a little further. I'm going to go back to my window and say I got to go beyond 10 seconds max. I can tell my equation's probably off because of that, but anyway, there's the graph that you should have had. Oh, and I didn't go quite high enough. I should look at my window one more time. And this happens a lot in the real world. You have to play around to get the window right. I'm going to go with max of 170 or something. Okay, so now it all fits on my graph. And I was looking for that maximum point. I go second, calculate the maximum. The guy who was gone yesterday, I really hope you were uh, able to catch on with this gra graph and calculator stuff quickly. Left bound, I go just to the left of it, hit enter, go just to the right of it, hit enter. And the last one, the guess one, you really don't even have to move it. You can just hit enter. You're close enough. And there we go. 5.6 and 154. Raise your hand if you had that. Same as me. Awesome. Let's go to lunch. All right, we're back from lunch. And where we just finished up was we had this parabola, and we figured out where the top of it was using that second calculate maximum deal. All right? And you know, some of you are sitting out there not secretly, not knowing exactly how to do that yet. And I want to make sure you get how to do that second calculate maximum. You've got to get to the left of it, to the right of it, and then right on top of it. There's three, it's a three-step process. All right? So I just did the maximum. So I'm going to use that three-step process on the other one. So right now, let's everybody grab your calculator, get this graph up, and then go to second. Calculate. And I'm going to ask you to do the zeros. Okay? Second calculate the zero. Everybody right now do this. Second calculate zero. Now, there's two zeros. We're going to get to the one on the right. Now, you know what? For me, i got to quit out because my graph is a little bit not quite right on the window. I have to go down a little bit further. So I want to make my Y minimum negative, let's say, uh, 30 or something so that I can see that intersection. So I'm going to hit graph again and see if I can see it easier. Yes, now I can see the zeros easier. Okay, I'm going to keep going for this guy right there. So I need to do second calculate zero, and if you don't learn this now, you're going to have to learn it again with the student watching you, 
because I'm going to have you show somebody in a moment how to do this. Okay, second calculate zero, left boundary. To the left of that spot I just pointed out, I need to get just to the left of it, which in this case is going to mean just above it and to the left of it. So there, I am to the left of that spot. I know I'm above it, but I'm also to the left of it. And now I'm going to get just to the right of it and then hit enter. And then I'm going to get right on top of it. When it says guess, that means get close. Some people were saying, but I can't get right on top of it. That's okay. When you hit enter, it'll go right on top of it automatically. And it is 11.22 seconds. So in this imaginary scenario where the guy could kick the ball at 55 meters per second, apparently that's way stronger than in real life because there's no way the ball would stay in the air for 11.22 seconds unless you kicked it incredibly hard. Okay. How many of you had those, all those numbers the same as me? All right, good. The last one is the uh, where is it after 1.5 seconds. That second, calculate the value. The value one is number one, and I got to say x equals. It tells it's asking because there's a blinking thing by the x equals. 1.5 is my x. That's what the time is. I missed the decimal there. 1.5. Enter, and it tells me it's at 71 feet, and it's still on the way up. Does that make sense? All right, I only have to teach you one more thing, and then you will have learned everything you need to know for your test. Your test is coming on Tuesday. There's only one more thing, and I have to just teach you this. I've told you what to do if I want time to be 1.5 seconds. That goes in the T. It goes in where the, where the X is. So let's look at the equation a little closer. If I gave you, instead of a time, which normally, of course, you'd put there, what if I gave you a height? What if I said, I want to know when the ball got to 100 feet high? Well, that's a Y, isn't it? But I can't put anything right there. So what you do is you put in a second equation into the calculator. Because that's a y equals thing, right? See, look, it says y equals right there. So if I want to say 100 feet, everybody type in on y2. Type in 100. That's technically y sub 2. And I'm going to type in 100, and that puts a line across my graphs at 100. Now, how can I tell where those two lines cross. Of course, that's the important spot. It's where the ball is touching at 100. Yes! Intersection. Go second. Calculate. Intersect. And I may give you a tip on this one that goes really fast. If you want to just, if you only have two lines that are intersecting, just go enter, enter, enter on the, all three questions. Enter, 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 and boom, it jumped to that intersection. It'll give you one or two intersection points really quick. Do you get on the way up, the ball hit 100 feet at 2.2 seconds? Does that make sense to you? All right, now let's find the other intersection point. I go second, calculate, intersect, again, same deal. But don't just hit enter, enter, enter. On the first two questions, they're just asking you, am I on the right curve? And if you've only graphed two lines, the first two answers will always be, and just you know, they will be correct. So just hit enter, enter. But the third one, where it says guess, that one you have to arrow over to the right or to the left to get close to the other intersection point. That's what the guess thing is trying to do, is say, which of these do you want? Because there's two places they touch. Okay, so the, move it over on the guess to close to the other one, hit enter, and now it jumps to that one. And that one was on the way down, the ball would hit 100 feet at 8.95 seconds. Second, calculate, intersect. That makes sense. What if, like, the like, if you're off just by one, my suspicion is, if you look at your y equals, look at your y equals for just a minute. Do you have a point one at the end here? Are you sure? Yeah. It's negative 4.9x squared plus 55x. Is it 55x? Yep. And is it a point one? Wait, I did, I did there you go. There you go. You found it. It's usually, if you're just off a little bit, it's usually you type something wrong in your equation. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Let me show you on today's homework a couple problems that I'm going to let you skip. Make your life go a little bit faster. On the one hand, I expect your homework to be done tomorrow. But on the other hand, if I'm going to do that to you, I expect that I only assign reasonable amounts of problems. And the homework, okay, fine. It's a weekend. But your homework for tonight is a little bit long. And so I'm going to allow you to skip a few. Uh, I'm going to say, 
that on today's homework, problems 3, 4, and 5 are not necessary. So you may skip problems 3, 4, and 5. Those three word problems can go away. All right. Let's look at the one that's the new thing that I hadn't taught you yet. It's on problem 7. Uh, hold on just a second here. And I meant to clear the ink. There we go. Okay. Let's look at problem 7. All right. Problem 7 here is exactly 2.1 seconds after Maurer hits the pop fly, a bird flies over home plate at a height of 140 meters. Can you put that 140 meters in for the time? No, it's a height. So you've got to put it in for a Y. So when you're doing this equation for number 6, you're going to put in this on Y1. This right here is telling you that you have another y. And this one is y equals 140. And you see where those two intersect. And that'll be the time when, uh, will. so the question is, will the ball hit the bird? Well, if those two intersect each other, then in theory, they would. All right. So this is uh, number seven where you'd have an example of putting in a second y equation into the calculator. Any questions? All right, I don't expect you to be awesome at this yet, but after this weekend, having done these problems and checked your answers against the answer key, then you should come and ask me questions on Monday. This Monday's our review day, and then we'll have a little test on this on Tuesday. It's a small quiz. All right, that's all I got for you for the video for today.